today, I just want to, uh, to basically uh, just kind of um, finish that off a little bit in terms of just a, hopefully a little bit of a, a, an inspiration from that, particularly when this last week we have been in our devo- devotions in, in the book, we've been looking at, well, what have we been looking at on our devotions? I maybe ought to just find out and see how many have been doing the devotions this week, yes. Um, but we went through this week and we kind of did each one, didn't we? We did the picture it and we did the pronounce it and the personalize it and the probe it. And, yeah, we, so we did that all on one scripture, one text, didn't we? Which was Psalm chapter 1. And, um, and, and through that. So which was, which is, for, for, for all of us, is blessed is the man. Oh, where's the women in all this, we wonder. <laughs> well, it's obviously, it's generic and meaning women as well. But um, blessed is the person, we ought to say, but blessed is the man, because that's the way I've learned it. <laughs> blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but in his law he meditates day and night. Yes, he is like a tree planted by the waters that brings forth its fruit in its season, its leaf withers not, yes? Uh, and, And he is like, whatever he does, it says, whatever he does, he is going to... Prosper, yes, but not so the wicked, they are like chaff. What's the difference between a tree and chaff? Roots, yeah? Chaff just kind of blows here, there, and everywhere, doesn't it? It's not got any roots, where with a tree, we have roots. And so that's what I want to talk about today, particularly taking as my text, Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and (coughs) 7, which says this, So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. This, actually, these two verses really sum up the whole of Colossians. They give you the reason for the letter that Paul wrote to the, to the Colossians. It's kind of a summary of his main point because they had failed to recognize all that was already theirs in the faith that they had already accepted. They were now starting to doubt that and to, and to go astray. And they failed to appropriate what they had learned into their daily life. They weren't applying the word to their life. And so he says, just as you received Jesus Christ. We receive Christ by faith, do we not? And so Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves, It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one, including Jonathan, can boast. Yes? Personalize it. (laughs) Yes? Put your name in there. Yes? And so our walk is by faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, now without faith, it is practically impossible. Almost impossible. It's going to be a bit difficult. Does it know? Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God, amen, Uh, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him, those who are, uh, you know, disciples of his, who have their daily devotions and go through the probate, pronounce it, personalize it, pray it, whatever. In other words, they're trying to apply the Word of God to their lives. You've got to believe that God is interested in you and interested in your life and interested in every aspect of it for it to come through. The issue what I find with this is that uh, so often we find that so just as 
uh, this text says, so then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, we often have a, a difficulty in our faith to, to, to actually to trust God with our faith. Now, a very famous tightrope walker called Blondin stretched a long steel cable across the Niagara Falls, and, uh, and he, even though it was, the weather was atrocious, he would walk along it, he would run along it, he would dance on it, he took a wheelbarrow full of bricks across it, back and forth, and eventually he said to the crowd, how many of you believe that I could put a man in the wheelbarrow and take them safely to the other side, of which the crowd roared, yes, you can do it. And so at that point then said, can I have a volunteer? I want to say to you, there was not a single volunteer to get in that wheelbarrow because although they said he could do it, they weren't willing to put their life on the line for it. And too many times as Christians, we're willing to say, yes, you can do it, but we're not willing to get in the barrow uh, and, and for God to take us across the tightrope because the way is narrow. Is that not right? And so God wants us... Uh, to do that. So don't just say Jesus is Lord. Understand that that means about trusting him and saying, yes, not only are you the boss, but you're my savior. You're the one I want to take a hold of. He is superior. He is, as we have sung, he is our king. (coughs) And so we've got to do that. Unfortunately, we often have the kind of commitment of the, uh, of the chicken and the pig that were walking down the road together and they got rather hungry after quite, walk, quite a long walk and the chicken said to the pig and said to it, how about we make an egg and bacon sandwich? Of which the pig turned to the chicken and said, well, that's all right for you because it only requires a contribution from you. From me, it, it requires a sacrifice. In other words, there's a difference between a contribution and giving everything that you have. And that's what 40 days is about. It's about getting into the Word in order that the Word gets into you and you become more like Christ, you more desire Christ, you're more willing to to serve Him and to follow Him and to do what He requires. Because faith comes through and hearing through... (coughs) We have got to understand, we've got to live in obedience. I remember many years ago um, hearing of the illustration of, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of a battleship, uh, a commander of a battleship, and, uh, and of a young man that was only a private. He was called Private Johnson. And uh, the captain was talking to the private and said to him, I, have, I will have you court-martialed. Uh, for this on the authority of the United States of American government, I command you to alter course 10 degrees south. I am a battleship. Of which the private responded and he said, this Captain Smith, so once again, all with all due respect, I command you to alter your course 10 degrees north. I am a lighthouse. Now, who... Was, uh, who is the boss there? Who is the one that should listen? So in other words, you might have a rank and think, this is my rank, this is my position. But actually, what really matters is that we listen to the lighthouse keeper. That we listen to Jesus, who is the light of the world. Because he can tell you, just move 10 degrees north or 10 degrees south. Because if you'll do it and not think, oh no, I know best, I know which way I'm. I'm a battleship. I've got purpose. I've got destiny. I've got, I've got things I need to do. I've got a course in life that I'm going to go on. I want to say to you, if you will get into the Word of God, God's Word will be able to say to you, 10 degrees north, Jonathan. 10 degrees north. No, I said 10 degrees, not eight and a half. 10 degrees. And that's what we've got to do, amen? We've got to let our roots grow down deep into Him. Now, the issue is no two plants are the same. They don't grow the same. They, they develop in different ways. And, uh, and so we understand that. They, they, they grow at different rates. They have different sizes, different shapes. Uh, and so we understand that. That's the same with us as people of God. 
we don't grow at the same rate. <coughs> but the issue is with a tree, as with any plant, is its roots are the most important part of it. Because if its roots are in and they're ingrained in it, then it will grow. A healthy tree will always grow. And I want to say to you, if you, do, if you concentrate on health rather than growth, you will find that growth comes as a result of just being healthy. And, and, that, and that applies. In fact, hopefully, they've got maybe one of the pictures. I don't know. They're busy working. And uh, it just has um, a picture of a, a tree uh, stump. And, um, and it has... Uh, no, um, maybe it's not there. But basically, when I was... I remember this kit hit me so hard when, when I used to live in Glasgow. And, uh, and uh, we lived at Castlemilk on, on the house that we were in. On the back of it, there was woodland. And uh, I used to love go taking our little uh, black Labrador, Sam, out on walks. Uh, he was the most placid dog ever, till he met another dog. And then he turned. And, um, and, and so, but what happened was he used to go, and I remember all these tall trees, whatever. And then this, this I hadn't been out for a couple of weeks. And, um, and then when I went back out, noticed that there's quite a lot of trees that have been felled. They'd taken out. So I have no idea why they cut them down to this day, and I didn't really bother inquiring about it. But I just thought, okay, they've, they've locked them off, level with the ground, that's it, they'll never see them again. But actually what I found is, a few weeks later, they started to get little buds, and then developed into branches. And so what happened was, is over time was, is those trees that had been locked down, they continued to grow and became trees again. All because, why? Because the roots were in the ground. There was nothing above ground to determine it. It was, there was no, the sunlight wasn't on any leaves, there was no no other thing other than the sustenance. That's why I'm saying to you, if you will get rooted in the Word of God, if you will take what we have done over the last 40 days and implement it in your life in order to build some roots, it will dramatically change what you can do. Because it's the roots and the size of the roots that determines the size of the tree that it can be on it. One of the things that they say about trees is that they're actually like a giant with just the tail showing. They have a, such a root system under, underneath. They are phenomenal. They're like a, a factory. In fact, they say to them, they say that they're actually one of the world's greatest factories because they can, they can take the water that is underneath the ground that is hardly bearable, but they take it in through their, through their root system and they bring it up to the highest point. And some of them can be absolutely phenomenally high, but it is the root system that matters. So, for example, with a Chinese bamboo tree, I don't know if I've got one of them up there. The Chinese bamboo tree, for example, you can have a, bam uh, have a Chinese bamboo tree and, um, and you can plant it and you can fertilize it and you can water it and it will not grow. It will stay like that four, five, maybe six years and then all of a sudden, it can grow up to 90 feet within six weeks. In other words, for those four or five years, what's it been doing? It's establishing its root system. So that on the appointed time, in God's time, in its life, it will grow to what it is defined to be. It can grow up to three feet in 24 hours. It can just go, I'm an unbelievable kind of thing. What I'm saying to you is, you can, you can, if you get the right foundations in your life, I want to say to you at the appointed time, God will bring the growth. And you might be saying, I can't see anything. It just seems like nothing's happening. I'm watering, I'm fertilizing, I'm watering, I'm fertilizing, I'm, I'm doing everything I can, I'm aerating the ground, I'm doing what I can. And nothing is happening. A year in, year out, year in, year out. And God is saying, yeah, but I'm working. If you work with me, then at the appointed time, that which is unseen will appear. That which no one else can see will suddenly come to the light. And that's what God is wanting to do with us, with our root system. We have to make sure that we're getting a healthy root system in our lives because God wants to build something in our life that has a strong root system. 
Yes, all growth takes time. And the downward root system takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not learn one text, not just do 40 days in the Word, but do 40 years in the Word. Do, do longevity, and that will build a root system like no other. Amen? So that's what we've got to do. And unfortunately, we don't realize that trees, just like ourselves, grow, uh, uh, they grow stronger. Uh, they, they grow in any weather, but they will grow stronger in adversity. It's actually when a, a, a tree is growing, when it's just in the sapling stage, if, for example, it, there's plenty of water and everything's fine, it doesn't need to kind of develop deep roots. But it's actually when there's a bit of a drought and things are not going well for it, that it has to, its roots have to develop and go down deeper. And for you and I, it's our root system that will determine when we're in the famine season how we respond. The amount of times I see people who, when things are going well, they're all on fire for God. And then when things go wrong, and life goes pear-shaped, the storms of life come, the difficulties of life come. You know, some bull happens to kind of come charging at the tree of your life. And suddenly you think to yourself, oh no, it, it, things aren't as I wanted them to be. And so we've got to know that what our root system is that we've got is going to be right. We must not despise, as Zechariah 4.10 says, the day of small beginnings, the day of small things. We, we've got to realize all small things are what are required in order for things to become big things in our life. Amen. It's so important uh, to us that we, uh, that, that we, that we do that. And John 12, 24 says, except a corn of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone, but if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. In other words, it's that ability in us to constantly say, Lord, it's what you want to do in my life. I believe it's important for us to do that. Here's a tree, and uh, it's said to be the oldest living thing on planet Earth. 4,600 years old is what it's said to be. It's, it's a bristlecone pine tree, and uh, that's its estimated age. Now, some of California's giant sequoias, um, often just known as big trees, were, were, were at one time just seedlings, were at one time just small. And, um, and some of them are catching up this, uh, this tree in their age and their size and and, uh, and how big they will, will go. And uh, they're not the only ones. There's also um, the Californian uh, redwood, which is also um, a gigantic uh, tree as well. So in other words, it has to have the root system support that. And I've shown in the past sometimes that some of these trees, that they actually have dug out the middle of the, of the tree and uh, in order and so that the road can go through, it's, it's, it's built so big and it is so wide. Uh, in fact, some of them um, are so wide um, that they would actually, you could put them on Stockton High Street and it would reach from one side to the other side is how wide some of them are. They, they, can, they can regularly, obviously, as I said, go up to... Uh, go up to uh, 90 feet, no issues. There, there's actually, there's no restriction within a tree as to how wide and how tall it can grow other than actually the nutrients of the soil that it's in. So in other words, it's where it is. So for example, like the Japanese bonsai, they purposefully restrict it so there is to stunt its growth. And so in other words, your growth can be stunted and not become what, what is actually in you and could become in you because of other things uh, uh, around you. In other words, if you're not getting the nutrients of God's word and in, in his presence and, the, and, the, and peop, the people of God and serving that out and working it out, you're never going to be able to be what God wants you to be. Yes, so you can maybe want to be um, uh, something great for God, but actually, unless you start and get the foundations right in your life, and until you get all the things that God wants you to do, you're never going uh, to see it, uh, see it happen. It is so important for us to grow strong in the faith. 
it is so imperatively strong for us. And so Colossians 3.16, which we learned um, part A, says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And that obviously has been one of the key texts for us. But that's what we've got to do. We've got to let the word, if you want to have root system in your life, then you need to, you need to put some of this into, into practice and for it to be ongoing. That's my cry to you is keep on keeping on. Keep doing what God wants you to do. And you've got to do it in community. You see, one of the things with these trees is that what they have the ability to do is, uh, is depending on where they are, you'll find different types of trees that actually, when they, when they go underground, there is, um, there's a synergism working. They are working together, and so they, where one has maybe got good access to water, and another one has got good access to nutrients, and another one has good access to the sunlight, that they actually work together to help each other to become, to become better. And that's what we've got to do, and in our small groups, we have got to realize that it's actually when we help each other and stir one each other on and encourage one another. If you're not there, you can't be encouraged. And if you are there, you can encourage other people. We are there for each other. Amen? And just as the tree uh, <coughs> needs that, we need each other. <coughs> and, and so for those, particularly the Africans amongst us, will know about the baby wildebeest. It's, um, the wildebeest is Africans uh, antelope. <coughs> excuse me, and it migrates to the plains of Tanzania each year to mate and have its young. And watching a documentary on this, uh, they have a vicious predator called hyenas. And um, the thing with the wildebeest is that their young ones, when they're birthed, they have about 15 minutes to get on their feet and join the herd and to get, to get going uh, with them and to run. But a mother and a newborn baby are vulnerable at that point, that's where they're most vulnerable. And so the hyenas, what they do is, they have some of the hyenas, they would distract the mother while the others ate the young. And, 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 but what, what is fascinating is, is in, the, in the background, not far off, there's absolutely thousands of wildebeest and they don't bother. They might just raise their head and have a look, but they don't get involved. So what I'm saying to you is, is we have got to understand that there is an enemy, there is an hyena after you and me. And he wants us at our most vulnerable and he wants those around us that are at their most vulnerable and will do whatever's necessary. He will try to distract you so that he can have a go at others. But there's safety in the herd. There's safety in the team. There's safety in the body of Christ of being together and helping one another and not for us just to watch on and just to look on but to actually take an active role in each other's lives. Uh, as, as Cain would say, am I my brother's keeper? And we know the answer is yes. We are there to be there for one another. We are meant to help one another in what we're doing. So we need Christians to help us and to support us. So my cry to you is after this 40 days of purpose, 40 days of, uh, in the word, is that you get into the word and stay in the word, but don't just have it as knowledge because knowledge puffs up, but have it so that actually you're going to apply it to your life so that you can live out what it has in your small group, in your family life, in your work life, and in your personal life so that you can be all that God wants you to be. Amen.